Hi, welcome to part 4C of the turret tutorial. Uh, in this part we're going to set up death for the enemy we made. So in the last video we set up sort of health, GUI and dealing damage. In this video we are to get kill stuff when it reaches zero health. And then sort out this turret deciding which target to shoot. So let's get on with that. So first thing I need to do is create another script and I'm just going to call it death, what it is and yeah so then just straight into code as usual. Okay so in the last video we set up the message handling stuff so with that we also set up a message type of damaged. So what we can do is take the in health UI, we grab that receive message and this part, bring this over to def. Okay, and what we need to do then is so now we've got the this will register a delegate for the receive message function, and all we need to do is alter this to handle setting this new message. So, nothing complicated about this nice and simple and makes setting up death in this situation very easy. Now you pro some of you might be wondering why we're doing this message system thing like surely because put health UI into the health and this death into health but in a situation where you didn't want the health UI or for some reason you didn't want your thing to die then or you didn't want it to die this way this makes it very easy to swap out new ways. So you can just remove the health UI script and your UI will s stop working, but your code will still run and work fine. In sort of every, every other respect, it's just the UI will stop updating. Whereas if it is embedded into the code, you have to go in and actually remove it or have some sort of ball, and then that's still permanently there. This way it's very easy just to get rid of code that you don't need. So yeah, that's the reason why we're sort of following the messages and stuff. Anyway, so for this we all get def data like we have done with damage and sort of the health change data. And def data equals message data as def data. Then if def data doesn't equal null. Right. Yeah again, write a function, void uh die. Got nothing else to worry about in that. Uh, in this situation, we'd actually nearly need to use the def data. Like, what I'd actually store in this? Ah, uh, the attack and the attack. Yeah. Right now, we don't actually need to use any of the data we get from it, but it's nice to know that we did get the right data. Just so, just to make sure we did sort of get the right. Yeah, it just feels better that way. But yeah, later on, we will actually use the data in that further down the line but for now so in this die function I am just going to destroy the get object so destroy get object and this time actually put in the function again that's it so now this death gets written and when the enemy dies it will get destroyed So as you can see that was nice and sort of fast to set up. Would have been just fast set up with just having it all in one script, but like I said, it's not as flexible as this is. The main downside of this is the amount of scripts you end up with on one thing it starts getting ridiculous. Death. Okay, so now that thing can die, hopefully. Fingers crossed. So laser laser dead, cool. And then it changes to this target. That's nice and straightforward and works like a charm. Uh, yeah, one second, I think I remember. So, so we're gonna set up the we're gonna set up the other enemy now to have sort of the same thing. So what we'll do is we'll take the canvas off this one, paste it into this one. Oops, I did not paste it in. That paste it. I put. Yeah, there you go. Paste it in that one. Set its position to zero. There you go. It's now above. 
that one instead. And now we sit down all the scripts that we've been writing recently. So message handler, uh, health, health UI, uh, and def was it? Yep, def. Set three of those, damaged, health changed, died. Then the slider. I'm gonna click play. Yeah, I've got a feeling this is gonna happen when this one dies. Yes. Right. So we need to sort of get rid of these lasers when it runs out of targets. Um it was sort of forgot. So yeah, well well yeah, the script that we're gonna change now is we'll change the shooting system so that we get rid of those lasers when it's not got a target. And then we will proceed to finish well to add a couple more things for the to to our AI. So let's jump to that. Alright, so fixing that shooting issue first. So in here, when the angles are too great, we do remove them. So this is what we need to use to actually remove them. So what we will do is we will turn this into its own function. So let's call it void remove last projectiles and then copy the while loop paste it in there and we'll replace this with remove last projectiles now all we need to do is if no target if we're a beam remove last projectiles because all projectiles clean themselves up by like destroy themselves over time or when they get to the location, whereas a beam's consistent fired. So we need to sort of take care of that in this situation. So yeah, that's set up to work. And should work fine, so let's jump back to the game and have a quick check. Alright, so up the turrets. I'm gonna make it move faster. And deal damage faster. There we go. Yeah, so once you kill the target, it stopped firing the beams. That's what we wanted. So we have file save. And save the project as well. Okay, so now we will take care of those two extra tutorials. Right, so turret AI script. So nearest, furthest, weakest, strongest. So we've got our target nearest and our target furthest. Now we need void target weakest. Now yet again, these two are gonna be sort of reflections of themselves. So they'll be very similar, but slightly different. So we'll write the weakest, then just duplicate the function, change what we need, and just bring it out to target strongest. So for this, what we'll need to do is, <clears throat> Yeah, let's go have to assume everything's got a health script, pretty much. Yeah. You have to get that way for it. So, okay, so. Grab this line. So, yeah. List. List of the valid targets that are in range. Then for int i equals zero. i is less than valid targets. This plus. Okay, we need to start off things here. See it again, the game object that's the current target. And a int for the highest health. Save net expand everything great. Um yeah, so don't forget you need to set this to null. Oops, lowercase null. And I'll set this to zero for now. So all I need to do is if no target or uh, uh does the health No it actually Oh no max health probably kinda of So that don't matter. Where is it? That's right. Yeah, so 
F highest get if family targets I uh, don't get component health get its max health it is greater than the highest health be more consistent with this right then highest health equals what I'm going to do is I'm going to store this just to save get from getting it twice in max hp equals that yeah this makes the statement a lot easier to read as well there we go and the current target will equal valid targets Aye. cool and then just down here we just need to do tracker dot set target current target shooter set target current target there we go nice and simple duplicate this space it down target strongest oh yeah sorry there we go now that i get the weakest mm. Mm. Yeah, let's keep it separate, it's not too bad. Yeah, lowest health. Max HP is less than lowest health. Lowest health. Yeah. Ah, oh, that's... Okay. So, yeah, I accidentally wrote the one for getting the strongest, not the weakest. My bad. Now, the reason we don't do it off the... Yeah, the reason why I did it off the max health and not the current health is... I have done the current health before. And the mis what I realised was my big mistake there, which... May always realize, but as stuff loses health, then if you're targeting the strongest, you'll target the strongest, it'll lose health, and then it'll fall below a different target, and then you shoot that target. Then that target's health will fall below, then you go back to the other target, and suddenly the turrets jump in between two targets. So, basing it just off of what the original max health is, is a lot better, it's a lot easier. Now, to be fair, in this situation, it may actually be nicer to go for the um, literally the one with the least health left remaining for the weakest. That could be beneficial. But for now, we'll leave it like this. So, yeah, now we just need to add in target weakest. Oops. Target strongest. Add brackets. Yeah, so now when we go back in. It should sort of go for the one with the less max health, the more max health, yeah. Okay, so in the scene, what we're actually going to do first is change this guy's health to. I'm going to change it to 500. And we'll make the turret go for the weakest. Um, how to make him more apparent that he's. Uh, I need a way to make sure I know who's who. Oh, I have an error. Cause if I zero cannot be converted to an oh, I know what I did. Ah. Yep, oh, I forgot to do count. Yeah, there we go. Sorry, that's my fault. No, that starts. Count, yes. Or is on dead count because that's actual number of how many there are to sort of loop through. You can do if you had a four each, then you just package invalid targets, but I prefer four loops. I like with four each, it's sometimes get a bit yeah. Sometimes it gets a bit complicated editing the data. So it's better to do it this way. Well, in my eyes anyway. Oh. Also this. Not 0, 0.0 F. So I'm used to F loops. Yeah, it's just zero. So it's straight to zero. Alright, there we go. All of our arrows are gone now. And this guy will target the strongest. The strongest or weakest? Weakest. Right, but we want to make sure we know which one's which. So I'm going to make another material. Ah, let's create a new one. It's not hard. Create material. I'm going to call it orange. Because it's going to be orange. It's 
not exactly complicated. Um, yeah, orange, the slight line to the stronger one. I should have done this a while ago. Yeah, so now it's targeting this one, and then because this one's the only other one left, it wants to kill that one. Look at it go. There we go. And now if we change it to the strongest, it should go straight for the orange one. Yeah, there we go. Then go for the other guy. Alright, so that's it for sort of part four of this series. So now our turret's set up, it can select targets and actually shoot them. Now, in the next video, I'm going to, yet again, pull away from the turret for a bit. And I'm going to... The next part may not be necessary for a lot of people, but I'm going to set it up so that we can have a spawner spawning some of these enemies in. So that way it's like our consistent flow to test against, because right now I've only got two and... Obviously, there could be a few issues that arise with more things. So, we'll add in sort of, a sim we'll make a simple sort of enemy spawner. But yeah, that'll be in the next video. Yeah, so thank you for watching, and bye.